Marriage Conference with Strange Love Live. I'm still Cami Chaos, and I'm joined by Don Park. Yay. Hi, Cami. Hi, Don. Hi, Strange Love Live studio audience. All right, Don, where can we find you on Twitter and online? Where? You can find me at Don P. Don P. So nice, you'll say it twice. Don Don. Yeah. I'm not do wearing it, my badge. Am I the only person that does that? Do other people do that Kelly's, too? Kelly says dump dump. Kelly says dump dump. No, oh, she says dump a dump. Yeah. So, yes, Don P. Don P. on Twitter. And it's not Don P. Don P. Dot com, is it? No, it's donpark.org. Donpark.org. I didn't get yes. anything right. I got the D and the P, and that was it. You spoke just before lunch, right? Right. The session just before lunch on Android and location services. It was at the title of it? Uh huh. It was. It was. It was actually Android and location from social networks to games. Android? <clears throat> Android and services from social networks to games. Yeah. I, I can repeat things back. It's fantastic. <laughs> What's going on with Android and and open source? And it, it is open source. But what's going on since well, the last time we talked to you? Uh, probably the, the one interesting thing is that there are uh, a couple game apps out now. Mm-hmm. So uh, one's called Zombie Run. The mm-hmm. uh, demo is really fun. You you start it and you look at your phone and you see a map of where you're at and the, using GPS it will position so a, you. A real map of yeah. where you are. Yeah, okay. a real map of the real streets and uh, and then you you say where you're at and it will GPS tells you where you're at and then you click or you touch where you're going to. So this is like a walking trip basically. Mm-hmm. And once that happens, the game puts virtual zombies on the map. So as you're walking in the real world, you change your real world route to avoid zombies that only exist in the phone. So it's kind of an exercise method almost to get you to change your routine and go different places, but it's yeah. a game on your, on your and, Android phone. And so generally, um, that's called augmented reality. So you have reality, but then you, know, you filter reality through the phone. And that, and that filtered reality has zombies, so you've got to make real world decisions about this. So it's kind of like doing drugs, zombie. but without putting them in your body. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I understand that. Did you talk about the zombie game in your talk? I did. What so else I did you talk? a screenshot, and people liked it. What else did you? I, I walked by when I saw a big, but it looked like an iPhone, so I was confused. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that can't be an iPhone. It must be an Android phone. That looks like an iPhone. This is Don P. We're talking to. I didn't see the, the zombie game. I just saw a giant phone on the. Oh well, that was probably the zombie game. Oh okay. <laughs> I'll show it to you later. It's very cool. Yay. Okay. What else um, did you talk about aside from zombie games? Well, there's a role-playing game that is kind of similar mm-hmm. where you know, the map is where you are right now, mm-hmm. but there are, you're not constrained to like where you physically are. You, you start on whatever block you're on, but you can move your character around. And so then, without moving yourself? Yeah. And then other people can move their character, and you if you bump into each other, you can battle, and you have inventories, all the usual role-playing game stuff. But with a real map of the city that you're actually right, in. Right, right. And it plays when you're not logged in. So like I got an email last night saying I've been attacked by character so-and-so, and then later on I got another email saying I was dead. So when <laughs> you're not there, is it moving you around or do you no, just No, you just sit there like an idiot and get killed. So that, that you know, it's fun though that you know the you games gotta are find being a written. safer place to hide. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Maybe there's some place to sleep. Sometimes you can go to an inn, you know, and sleep. So you've been you're up in Portland now, you're a Portland boy, but you're up in Portland just for the conference. Right. We've been I Don P Don Pelis. Yeah, I came back uh, from Los Angeles on Sunday to, for this conference, mm-hmm. and then I go back for one more week. And then you're back, and you're ours again, and we get to keep you for a while. I hope so. We get yeah. to see your beautiful bicycle out and about. Yeah. yeah. Right. Most identifiable bicycle ever. I do not. I do not go past places and see someone else's bicycle and go, "Hey, that's." Yeah, a number of people. Uh, th- that white bucket on the back is mm-hmm. very noticeable. And, and the it, stickers. It has a strange old live sticker on it too. <laughs> The, the old large format Strange Love Life sticker yeah, or the new pretty, smaller? No, it's the old large format. Our new stick is just slightly more petite, better yeah. for laptops, and Stephen Walling's backpack. Okay, sweet. <laughs> this, this hard shell turtle backpack. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm looking at the cards. I'm glancing down, and I see that everyone delivers. Are so you that, talking about food or that's a, humanity? That's a new project. Yeah, it's, oh, um, okay. It's crowdsourced delivery service. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's kind of a simple idea. Like, you go to eBay and it's a market for things to buy. Then EveryoneDelivers.com is a market for things to deliver. So it's a way for people to make money um, mm-hmm. instead of sell something. They make money by doing a service. And so this service is going from point A, picking up a package, and dropping it off at point B. So it's like 
a messenger service. Yeah. Like yeah. Bike Messenger or the food delivery service. Yeah, but it's crowdsourced in the sense that you're not hiring a, a messenger company. You mm-hmm. are letting anyone who wants to do just that job do that job. So you either don't, so it's probably something that's not so important to you that, I mean. Right, yeah, so it needs like a rating system so you can trust the person doing the delivery. I wouldn't use it for like high value items, things like that. Like there may, you know, might work in an insurance option. You know, Is this something that's going on in Portland? Yeah, well, it's up now. It um, doesn't do a whole lot. It needs yeah. work. <laughs> but, but it's an idea. It's, it's a something concept that's out there. in progress. Yeah. Okay. And now, Identica. Go! Woo-hoo, Identica, federated microblogging, mm-hmm. done in an open source style. Um, that is the uh, Laconica? That's right. Laconica is the name of the software, and Identica is the most popular installation on the software. And that's the one that it goes local servers? Right. So the problem with Twitter is that it's, uh, well, its success is its problem, really. Mm-hmm. Um, it's become more and more dependent in the fact that the Twitter outage was delayed because of the Iraq uh, mm-hmm. events and, and wanting that to, to keep being tweeted. It was mm-hmm. amazing. Like, it's just an amazing demonstration of how important Twitter has become um, and how dependent, you know, conversely, how dependent we become on it. So if we have uh, installations of the Konica all around the country and they're able to talk to each other, when someone goes down, uh, it only affects people using that server. Yeah. Right? It doesn't affect the whole network. So Evan uh, Promadu, I don't know if I'm saying that right, gave a talk about it yesterday. We talked to him afterwards, yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Um, and that's still an active development. And mm-hmm. he's he has seven or eight employees now, a for-profit company, um, to support Laconica and do installations for companies that need it for internal messaging. So I thought that was impressive and uh, inspiring, and I want to contribute to that. Very cool. Yeah. What else have you attended? Or, or what else are you? Are you going to be uh, at the unconference tomorrow? I will be. Yeah. yeah. What What are you That'll looking forward to in the next? It's the last half fun. of today and, and tomorrow. Um, you know, I've kind of been struggling with that because I look at the schedule, and there's a lot of cool stuff, but it's almost like I'm attending it just to suck in some more general open source knowledge. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of it doesn't get applied. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, how can I apply? That's why Laconica is interesting. Because here's like an important project to me, and I can apply my skills to it. It's something that you're passionate about and you can give back to. Yeah. Yeah, the rest of the talks, you know, they're cool and all, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to pick cool whatever is looks not enough for Dawn. <laughs> whatever looks most cool, I will go to. All right. So Sounds what, good. What about you? Have you been attending talks? I haven't had a chance to. No, I kind of peeked my head in here and there, and I, I've gotten to watch bits of the ones that were live streaming because we, I got to see a little bit of Christmas scene as I saw a bit of the mayor's keynote this morning. Yeah, um, the live stream was awesome. Yeah. Do you know how many viewers they've had? Uh, I don't know what the numbers were. I know yesterday morning for the keynote we had 90. Sweet. Uh, I'm not sure what the numbers have looked like today. Does Brian have that information? Hundreds. Hundreds yesterday or hundreds today? No. Oh, okay. Hundreds and all. So they've been in the hundreds is what we're looking at. And they've announced today that next year there will be another open source bridge. So that Yay! is awesome. I heard the planning yeah. meetings on Saturday. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm saying that. Any time. And it's very funny and all. It's not a joke. Rick's this Saturday. I'm wondering if they're going to have it over breakfast. Mm. Who knows? It's. I think it's been going very well. Is it yeah. what you expected? Definitely. It's a lot of smart people here. Um, I was talking to an exhibitor, and he said he was impressed by the people out of state. You know, it was a lot more than just uh, Oregon tech people. Mm-hmm. So. Well, so. we had to do something. We had a void, and Portland doesn't seem to like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a big success. Um, what I wonder is what happens when OSCON says, hey, we really like Portland after all, and we're coming back. <laughs> and then we'll say, well, we'll say, you've had a chance to be in uh, Portland. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, know, we, we can probably coexist. Yeah, really? Probably. Wasn't it the same? Wasn't it in the summer? Yeah. I don't think we can handle two big open source maybe conferences they can during the, the summer. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe they can be in the winter. Yeah. Shared that way. All right. Well, Don, it was a pleasure having you once again. Donpark.org, at Don P. Don P. on Twitter. Thank you, Don. Thanks, Cammie.